all right guys welcome to the market beater trading strategy uh, brought to you by the teach me to fish effects as always you guys know I am Benny and I am here to bring you uh, the low risk high reward strategies that I use to profit from the forex market so let's go ahead and get into it um, I will let you know that the market beater trading strategy, uh, in my own opinion, it is the holy grail to uh, Forex trading. Uh, the reason why I say this is because all of the strategies that I have shared with you up until this point, they all stem from uh, the market beater trading strategy and once you get this strategy down you'll be able to use every single strategy uh, that's shared with you here in the teach me the fish effects community uh, we're talking about the inverse pairs we're talking about the beauty and the beast uh, trading strategy we're talking about um, the quarter swing trading uh, strategy you'll be able to understand all of that even the more you understand why we've implemented it why uh, I've shared it with you so um, and again this is the Holy Grail this is the for me this is the end all be all and uh, let's get into it so uh, first and foremost if you don't know the market is manipulated point blank the market is manipulated um, 60% of the market is controlled by five uh, major uh, world banks. All right. And uh, these five major world banks, uh, they control it. They, they control it all. They control 60% of it. Uh, they control majority. And uh, that's just that's just the way that the game is. So I always say it is a game but we don't play games because we know their playbook all right we know uh, what it is that they're doing all right and so uh, if you don't know the market actually goes in cycles all right the mar market actually goes in cycles and we can simplify these cycles um, into uh, three or two actually uh, the market will consolidate and then it will trend it will consolidate and then it will trend consolidate and then it will trend and now uh, these individuals who are in control of the market um, better known as uh, the market uh, makers uh, they use the market cycle against uh, what I call weekend traders or retail traders all right so you are not a retail trader I'm not a retail trader but we are uh, educated traders and uh, we trade when the market is most conducive for our success and again so that's where the market beater trading strategy comes in it and let's go ahead and get in, into it now there is a daily cycle with the market beater trading strategy there's a daily cycle with the market beta trading strategy and in this cycle there are four phases all right you have the accumulation phase the stop hunt phase uh, the days trend and the end of day trap now the accumulation phase is the uh, is when the market ranges sideways in consolidation while the banks or as we know them market makers trade between themselves taking money from unsuspecting traders and the next phase is the stop hunt phase and the stop hunt phase is the false move against the real market direction for the day all right and then we have uh, the trend of the day or the day's trend all right and that is that phase is for uh, the real market direction for that day okay and then we have the end of day trap phase and that is where the market ranges sideways and consolidation trapping and taking money from unsuspecting traders all right so uh, there, there's a daily cycle and in that daily cycle there are four phases the accumulation phase the stop hunt phase uh, the trend of the day 
and then there is the end of day trap. All right. Now, um, there are trading times that are given to us. All right. There are trading times that are given to us that lets us know when the sessions open and when the sessions close. But there are uh, real trading times where the market makers, uh, they manipulate the market. All right. And so I want to share that with you. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, at 5 p.m. All right. At 5 p.m. 5 p.m. And these are all Eastern Standard Times. Okay. These are all Eastern Standard Times. So at 5 p.m., the high of day and the low of day is reset, right? So 5 p.m. is when the actual market starts. So for us individuals uh, here uh, in America, um, on the East Coast of America, all right, 5 p.m. is typically the end of the day for us, but for the Forex market, that is the beginning of the day. All right, and that is when the initial high of the day and initial low of the day uh, is reset. Now, from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m., uh, there there is uh, what is considered the dead gap. There's not much much movement going on. All right, and from 8:30 p.m. to 3 a.m., that is the Asian session. Now, from 3 a.m. to 3:30 a.m. of the Asian session, that's the dead gap. Really, nothing nothing is going on right now from 3 30 a.m. to 9 a.m. that's the London session and from 9 a.m. to 9 30 a.m. Uh, that's considered another dead gap right and then at 9 30 a.m. to 5 p.m. is our New York not New York <laughs> but New York session all right and so uh, these are the actual trading times. OK, never mind what you see online, other websites. These are the actual trading times. And you we're mainly uh, going to focus on uh, two specific times. And I'm going to show you I'm going to show you what those are here in just a little bit. But first, let's talk about the accumulation phase of the daily cycle. All right. So uh, the market opens at 5 p.m. All right. The initial move up or down for 15 to 25 pips. All right. There is going to be an initial move up or down for 15 to 25 pips. After that, you'll see that the market is going to range between 50 pips uh, as the market makers trade between themselves. And this is called circular trading. All right. Or interbank trading, circular trading, interbank trading. This is just the market makers trading between themselves, uh, trapping unsuspecting and retail traders. All right. And so around 1 a.m. ish or so, uh, they'll look at their books to decide what they uh, what they will do. All right. So basically uh, what they're looking at is they're looking at the orders that they have to um, uh, for lack of a better term, translate uh, the currencies for different businesses and individuals. So let's say uh, if, if they have like $5 million of buy contracts, all right, uh, they're going to take a look and say, okay, man, we need $5 million, all right, so we need to grab $5 million from these retail traders, all right, I need to, I need 5 million uh, Japanese yen translated to 5 uh, million U.S. dollars, so they're going to trap those $5 million from the Japanese yen, so now that they can take uh, that money uh, to their U.S. customer and and give them the five million dollars in their currency. So they're going to take a look around one o'clock or so at their books, and they're going to decide what it is that they're going to do. All right. Now, once they have made their decision, they they hit the stops in both directions before leaving uh, the Asian range. And I'm going to illustrate this for you, and I'm also going to show it to you on the chart. Uh, so don't worry, just just keep all this in mind and take notes, pause the video, uh, think about what I'm saying and just let it all sink in for you. All right. Now let's talk about the stop hunt phase of the daily cycle. All right. Uh, this is where the market makers make their false move, their false move for the day. And they're going to do this in three bursts or levels. 
all right the stop hunt happens 25 to 50 pips above the Asian session high or below the Asian session low and this is all depend this all depends on uh, which way they, they they need to go whether they need to get buy contracts or sell contracts all right uh, but we uh, we're, we're definitely going to watch out for the end of Asian traps in the beginning of London traps and I've told you guys this over uh, the course of being a part of the community uh, over uh, me sending out trade alerts and, and doing live analysis and live coaching sessions all right uh, we watch out for the end of Asian traps or any type of end of session traps but uh, specifically we're going to look out for the end of Asian traps and also the beginning of the London session traps all right now the market makers will make a powerful move to trick traders into false direction to trigger stops and pending orders forming the M at the high of the day or the W at the low of the day. I, 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 uh, I know this may be your first time seeing this uh, in a tra trading video but you've heard me talk about knowing your ABCs of the market. You've heard me talk about being able to recognize your ABCs and uh, we're specific talking about recognizing M's actually actual M's uh, in the market and W's in the market all right so the M's uh, they're formed at the high of the day all right the highest price that uh, the market is going to be at for that day that of that pair for that day and then the W forms at the low of day of, of the day it's going to uh, uh, be formed at the lowest price that the um, that that pair is going to be at for that day now the first leg and I'm talking about of the M or the W might show as a pin and the second leg may or may not take out the high of the day all right so uh, you see how this M is proportionate all right so this the top of this M it matches the top of uh, the top left of the M matches the right uh, the right of the the top right of the M and like the uh, left bottom of the W matches the left the, the excuse me the left the bottom left of the W matches the uh, bottom right of the W all right so this this is proportionate but when we're looking uh, at our charts and we'll go there soon uh, they may be they, they they may not be portionate all right they may not be portioned all right so again the first leg might show uh, a pin and you guys if you've looked at the uh, candle the candlestick unit all right uh, look at those charts you know what a pin is all right and so the first leg might show as a pin and the second leg may or may not take out that the high of the day meaning that it may not match up and it may not go above all right uh, we just have to be watchful okay and I'm gonna show you guys how it is that we're, we're to be watchful all right now when the market trades above the Asian session we're looking for the M setup and when the market trades below the Asian session we're looking for the W setup all right so that means that during the Asian session right we're not trading during the Asian session right we're not trading during the Asian session we're only looking to see what the Asian session is uh, is it has done and then what the market is doing coming out of the Asian session all right so if we look at the market all right and we look at the high and the low of the Asian session and if uh, coming out of the Asian session uh, the uh, the market goes up then we're looking for the M setup all right if it goes up that's our false move right and we actually know that in all actuality for the day the daily trend is going to be down so again the M sets the high of the day so if it goes up then we're looking for the N set M setup but if the market goes down then we're looking for the W setup all right and we're going to get into that we're going to get into that uh, a little more okay all right so don't worry don't worry just let it all sink in and when we get to the charts you'll see everything all right uh, now once enough contracts have been accumulated and this could take up to two hours then they talking about the marker makers will go on the daily trend and they're gonna do this in three levels all right now I want you to, to, to remember if you if, if they don't reach the contract goal they will keep hit peak formation a third time all right so they may not be uh, they may if, if they're developing an, an, an M if an M is setting up right even though our our 
the normal M has two uh, top levels. All right, the normal M has two top levels. Uh, they may go come up here a third time. All right, and you have to be okay with that. All right, and I teach you how to be okay with that through uh, risk management. All right, and if you don't know, you should know that you. Uh, I highly recommend that you only trade at one percent of your account. That is the most you should trade at at one percent of your account. So if you have one hundred dollars, only trade a dollar. All right. I prefer you, and I call that the one hundred pip rule. Right. The one hundred pip rule is trading at one percent of your account. So if you have a hundred dollars, then you're going to trade at a dollar. Right. I prefer you to use the one thousand pip rule. Right. And that means that you're going to trade at a tenth of one percent. Right. You're going to trade at a tenth of 1%. So if you have $1,000, instead of trading at $100, all right, for 1%, you're going to trade at $1, all right, for a tenth of the 1%, all right. And what this does is allows you uh, to stay in the market more and also not uh, be worried about uh, your account being depleted. All right, and then this is a prime example. All right, because this cycle does happen. You're going to see this cycle. I'm going to show you the cycle that happens every single day over every single pair. And if you don't believe me, just wait until I show you. All right, and so this is, I, I recommend doing the, the 1000 pip rule. Okay, so that way, if they do go up a third time, okay, if they do go up a third time, uh, you know, you don't have anything to worry about. All right, you don't have anything to worry about. Now, once the uh, once enough contracts have been accumulated, again up to two hours, then they will go on a daily trend in three levels. And if they don't get those contracts, all right, if they haven't fooled enough retail traders, all right, then they're gonna go back a third time, all right, and they're gonna hit that peak formation. And the peak formation, it can be an M or a W, all right. The M is the highest point, all right, that's a peak, and then the W is the lowest point, and that's a peak, all right. Now, the day, let's talk about the day trend phase of the uh, of the daily cycle. Now, I, ideally, when the 3.30 to 3.45 a.m. candle prints, and we're talking about on a 15-minute chart, all right? That's what we're going to be looking at, a 15-minute chart. So, ideally, when the 3.30 a.m. to 3.45 a.m. candle prints, it will show us a reversal pattern or confirmation candle. But only get in after the confirmation candle, all right? You're only going to get into the trade after the confirmation candle, all right? So, uh, you can literally, literally wake up at 3.30 or wake up at 3.45. I do that sometimes. I will wake up at 3.45, all right? I will just wake up at 3.45, all right? And I'm going through my charts. I'm going through my pairs, and I'm looking for uh, that 3.45 candle that has printed that is showing me uh, a reversal pattern or a confirmation candle. And again, you should go through, you should have gone through by now uh, the, the, the reversal patterns and the candle, uh, the candlestick uh, unit. All right. And so you should know what I'm talking about. If you don't go back and reference that unit. OK, now the trend will typically last for three pushes or three levels. All right. That trend, that trend is going to last for three pushes or uh, three levels. And it's going to it's going to take it's going to push for about six to eight hours. OK, so you're, you're going to be in that trade for about six to eight hours. So, again, the market does fluctuate, but it's only going to be heading in one direction. All right. You're going to get pullbacks. All right. But it's still going to head in one direction. All right. So levels are a push. Uh, this is how you determine the levels. Levels are a push, a consolidation, and then a stop hunt before moving on to the next level. And you're going to see this in the market. And I'm going to show it to you on the charts. All right. You're going to see a push. Right. You're going to see the trend. All right. It's going to uh, it's going to either go up or it's going to go down. Then you're going to see it's going to consolidate, meaning that it's going to go sideways. And then you'll see it's it's going to spike in the false direction before moving on to the next level or continuing on in uh, the actual trend of the day. Now, once all three levels have been reached at the end of the day, uh, another M or W, 
whichever is opposite from the opening move will be formed all right so if uh if uh at 345 the m is uh has been um, set up and the daily trend has been a downtrend all right it's been a seller's market then uh at the end of the day the w is going to be formed now at if at the beginning of the day the w was formed all right and the overall trend for that day uh was going up it was a buyer's market then a m will be formed all right and it's going to sit there and it's going to consolidate now i want you to be sure to get in on uh the confirmation candle of the second leg all right get in on the confirmation candle of the second leg if you miss it just wait for uh the opportunity at the end of the day or ideally the next day or go to the next currency pair uh that you're watching that hasn't formed uh the beginning m or w of the day so if you wake up at 345 and you do not see uh, a reversal pattern if you do not see a confirmation candle you do not have to trade okay you do not have to trade we are looking for the perfect setup all right and the market makers they they have uh, different variations of this uh, but we're looking for uh, what I uh, uh, have heard the Mona Lisa uh, painting all right we're looking for the perfect picture okay and if we don't see the pattern all right if we don't see it then we do not trade all right we're looking for the ideal situation that's most conducive for us to profit all right so again if we wake up and if we don't see it then hey let the day go by and you can obviously see what the market has done whether it has gone up or gone down all right and then uh uh because you know uh you know what the market has done you know what to look for so if it if it has uh been uh trending upwards all right for the day then you know that okay towards the end of the day i'm going to be looking for an m and i can catch a few pips all right or if it's been trending down then you know okay i'm going to be looking for a w at the end of the day and catch a few pips uh, and again preferably i say just 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 wait for the next day all right if you're only looking at one pair just wait for the next the next trading day or uh just go on to the, just flip to your charts and look for that mona lisa picture all right now when you get it right you will be able to put your stop loss 25 pips above the high or low of the day and i'm going to show you all of this all right all right so but when you get it right when you when you jump in on the confirmation candle all right after that confirmation candle has has, has printed you're going to be able to to uh put your stop loss all right uh, 25 pips above the high of the day or 25 pips below uh the low of the day again i always uh, recommend not to actually use a uh a stop loss because uh these guys can actually look at your terminal and they see they see and know where you have your stop losses and they go right for the stop losses just to get you out of the trade before they make their move all right and so i just say mentally do it but you can do it uh, typically uh, you know um, you uh it, there may not be enough traders to actually put that actually put their stop loss in for them to say hey let's go and get that money so if you can if you want you can do it about 25 to 50 pips above the high today all right you want to make sure that your your, your account is strong enough to do this all right so that's why i work i strongly recommend uh the 1000 pip uh rule um uh, but again, no more than the 1% or the 100 pip rule. All right. Now, watch this. If your stop loss is hit, if you do decide to, to actually put in a stop loss, uh, if your stop loss is hit and over 25% of your account is in jeopardy of being lost, then you're over leveraging your account. All right. It's, it's as simple as that. You're you're putting uh, your lot size is too high. All right. If if you're if you put in uh, a stop loss. And over 25% of your account uh, it could, could possibly uh, be uh, deleted, <laughs> if you will, or lost, then you're over leveraging your account and you're not following the 100 pip rule or preferably uh, the 1000 pip rule. So keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. At the end of the day, you are responsible for your own account. All right. Now let's talk about the end of the day trap, the daily cycle. All right. Once all three levels have been reached at the at the 
excuse me, if once all three levels have been reached at the end of the day, a M or W, whichever is opposite from uh, the opening move, will be formed. We talked about that. Once the second leg has been formed, talking about the end of the day, the market will consolidate above the low of the day or below uh, the high of the day for 25 to 50 pips. All right. For 25 to 50 pips so uh, you're good for you know roughly I would say you're probably good for anywhere between uh, 15 to 40 pips uh, once once that happens all right so if you don't catch it just wait till the end of the day wait for uh, the market to consolidate all right it's gonna it's gonna form the the, the it's gonna uh, form uh, the W at the low of the day or it's gonna form the uh, M at the high of the day and it's only gonna range for about 25 to 50 pips all right uh, it's only gonna range for 25 to 50 pips and I, again I say of those 25 to 50 pips um, you may be able to get the full 25 to 50 but I say that you're probably good for 15 to 45 pips which is still which still is not not bad if, especially uh, if you're compounding and doing the twin trades and stacking your trades and just being responsible all right just making sure you're not over leveraging your account so you're gonna get you're gonna either way you're gonna get you're gonna get some pips now let's talk about ideal trading or the Mona Lisa trade all right uh, you're only gonna trade the London and New York sessions especially for beginners all right you can make money in the the Asian session but uh, I don't even trade the Asian session you can I mean, now, now you can you can um, but I don't even teach how I don't teach you guys how to do it because this is uh, this community is for low risk high reward strategies all right and so I don't even teach it because it's it just ranges so we're only going to trade the London and New York sessions all right the uh, the ideal uh, Asian session uh, range is 50 pips or less all right the ideal range for the Asian session is 50 pips or less so the highest high all the way down to the lowest low and vice versa should only be 50 pips or less all right and we're talking about the ideal trading all right the ideal uh, trading zone is 25 to 50 pips higher or lower than the Asian session range slash consolidation. All right. So the trading zone uh, is basically where the M at the high of the day is going to form or the W at the low of the day is going to form. All right. So again, so that basically means coming out of the Asian, the Asian session, which should only be no more than 50 pips. All right, coming out of it, um, the ideal trading zone or area where the M is going to form or the W is going to form is no more than 25 to 50 pips ab uh, above the high of the Asian session or below the low of the Asian session. All right, uh, you're going to identify key support and or resistant areas so you can enter the trade safely. All right, so you're going to be, we're going to get into it, don't worry, but you're going to identify key support uh, and and or resistant areas so you can enter the trade safely. All right, uh, this kind of goes back to the support and resistance. All right, they use that. They use support. They use resistance. Uh, they use, they're going to use the uh, EMAs. They're going to use the uh, high and low of the previous day, high and low of the previous week, high and low of the previous month. So we're just going to identify key support. Uh, support and resistant areas now we're also only going to look for a highly probable setups that will put you in profit M and W with selling signal at 345 a.m. or 945 a.m. and so I say hey this we're looking for an ideal trade All right so at 345 a.m. I'm looking for um, uh, the second leg of the M, the second leg of the W, and then also at 9:45 a.m., I'm looking for the second leg of the M, the second leg of the W. If I do not see it, all right, whichever time you decide to come to uh, your terminal, if you do not see it, you do not have to trade it. Do not feel pressured. Go on to the next pair. All right. Uh, ADR, ADR, which is the average daily range, has been taken out. All right, these are all ideal conditions for our trade, and we'll get into the average daily range. Right, the average daily range is just simply uh, the average um, uh, pip movement of the currency pair. All right, some may be 50, some may be 200, 300, 
and I love those pairs like the uh, GBP NZD that's uh, about 250 plus uh, uh, pips uh, per day uh, so I love watching uh, that pair even though it is a 15 pip spread all right uh, it is a 15 pip spread so uh, and I'm talking about G the GBP NZD but every pair has an ADR every pair has an average daily range that it moves and we'll get into that all right and uh, of course you're gonna watch out for the end of Asian session trap and the beginning of London session trap all right those are the ideal trading all right now let's uh, let's do an illustration let's do an illustration of uh, the ideal daily uh, trading uh, and so this is what's going to uh, take place all right so uh, let's say this let me make that a little better for you all right let's just say this is our dotted session line that we're that you'll see all right on your chart all right and uh, it's going to be at five PM Eastern Standard Time, all right? Eastern Standard Time. Okay. Apologize by that. Oops. That's the one I should have used for you guys. <laughs> so five PM. Okay. It's a little too big for me. I apologize, guys. But hey, this is a live training. Okay. Let's see if we can grab this. All right, tell you what, let's just do it like this. All right, so again, this is going to be at, at 5 p. Eastern Standard Time. Okay. All right. This is what's going to happen at 5 p. Eastern Standard Time. You're going to see the accumulation phase, which is the Asian market. All right. So all you're going to see the market is it's just going to come in. It's just going to range. All right. It's just going to range, and it's going to range. It's going to range. Okay. Now that market should only be ranging 25 to 50 pips, no more than 25 to 50 pips. Uh, now what's going to happen is they're going to come out. All right, I'm going to show the, show you the M setup. They're going to come out of the Asian range. All right, and this is going to be our Asian range. They're going to come out of the Asian range. All right, and they're going to do a stop hunt. Now the stop hunt is going to be done in three bursts or three levels. So that's one. You'll see it go up. Then you see it come down. And it might consolidate a little bit, and then you'll see it go up again. That's two. All right, and then you see it come down. It'll consolidate a little bit. And then it's going to go up again, and that's three. All right, and since it's going up, we're going to watch for the M formation. All right, so it's going to go up. It's going to come down. It's going to go up again and then at around 345 right it's going to come down and then we're going to wait for the confirmation candle right it's going to show us that okay this market is going to go down and then it's going to go down now for uh three pips uh, excuse me for three levels so level one all right then it's going to stop hunt go down for level two stop hunt go down for level three and then it's going to consolidate and then it's going to make the W all right for the low of the day and it's going to go into consolidation all right and then we again we call this you guys know what this is this is 5 p.m. this is the Asian session all right 
All right. So this uh, the Asian session is where we're going to find the uh, accumulation phase. All right. And then the stop hunt, we're typically going to stop hunt. We're typically going to see that uh, be during the London and or New York session. All right. Uh, just depends on how fast and how slow the market is moving. Then we're going to get uh, we're going to get this. Um, we're going to get this peak formation M here and then it's going to work its way down for for the rest of the day six to eight hours all right six to eight hours and then it's gonna form and consolidate all right uh, this will actually be a part of the consolidation as well okay uh, but it's gonna form and it's gonna consolidate and it's gonna make the uh, W the W shape right and then go ahead and consolidate for 5 p.m. the next day all right now that's for the M now let's take a look at uh, how the uh, W, uh, how the W will form. I wonder. Okay, no, it won't allow me to actually grab that. Let's see. Thank you guys for being patient with me. That's not what I want. All right, so let's just go ahead and erase this. All right. And let's show you what the W is going to be like. The W is going to be like this during the Asian session. All right. No more than 25 to 50 pips. All right. It's going to consolidate in that range. All right. And now this time it's going to come out. And this this is the stop point. One. One push down. Two pushes down. The third push down coming down here first leg has been formed now we're waiting on the second leg all right this is the first leg now we're waiting on the second leg 3:45 a.m. all right 3:45 a.m. waiting for that confirmation and now it's going to go up one push consolidate stop on two pushes consolidate stop on three pushes end of the day Form the M, consolidate, and again, this is the Asian session. Just, just, just how we started it out, and I, I'm going to show you. This is what happens. All right. So again, the Asian session that consolidates for no more than 50 pips, shoots out. All right and then goes down three levels we're waiting on um, the actual trend for the day we're waiting on that confirmation for when it's it's done consolidating down here then it's gonna shoot up alright and now let's move on to the next so that that's the illustration that's that's what it's gonna look like okay that's exactly what it's gonna look like now 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 I want to talk to you about the weekly cycle right so the weekly cycle just like we had a daily cycle you also have a weekly cycle all right you actually even have a monthly and a yearly cycle but we're not going to get into that we don't need to get into that daily and weekly um, is all we need and we're going to be very very profitable okay so just like the daily cycle the weekly cycle has an accumulation phase all right this is again this is where the market it ranges sideways in consolidation while the banks or the market makers trade between themselves while taking money from unsuspecting traders um, there's a stop hunt, stop hunt phase all right and again this is the false move against the real market direction for the week and then there's the trend phase which is the real market direction for the week and now we have our safety trade, which is the ideal trade for max for the maximum pips without losing. All right. That's the safety trade. And then you have the mid week reversal or MWR. This is the real market direction for the entire week. Now, let's go into uh, the ideal weekly trading. Uh, illustration all right and so again this is based on a week okay and you have the accumulation phase the stop hunt phase the trend phase the safety trade and the midweek reversal all right so 
it it looks exactly the same it looks exactly uh, it looks exactly uh, the same All right, guys we are back and now again we're talking about the ideal weekly uh, trading uh, illustration so again we have the accumulation the stop hunt the trend the safety trade and then the midweek reversal all right now accumulation phase stop hunt the actual trend in the safety trade and then the midweek reversal now watch this and this is how this works Sunday slash Monday is our accumulation phase so we don't trade it and typically Tuesday take that back uh, Sunday Monday is our accumulation phase and then also that uh, that peak formation all right I'm gonna call it like the initial uh, high uh, the uh, initial high of the week all right let's call it the I how it's made again on Sunday Monday all right and this is what the perfect trade looks like and then Tuesday will be the safety trade all right and the, again the safety trade is basically the the trade in the week the tr it's the trade in the week uh, that makes a the peak formation all right well it, it it it's the trade that you take that goes against the peak formation of the of the week all right all right so that's what that's what happens on Tuesday all right and that's the safety that's the safety trade because we know that hey we have a day or so um, before the market can turn around and we can jump in here and we can swing trade this um, from from Tuesday all the way to Wednesday Thursday all right so uh, Sunday Monday accumulation also will show us uh, the initial high of the week and this is for the M formation right for the week okay and then um, on Wednesday through let's say I'll just do it like this Wednesday to Thursday all right we'll be looking for our midweek reversal all right and then on Friday it's typically um, it's typically when uh, the market will consolidate just like the daily trend all right the market will typically consolidate and so that's why I, I call Sunday Monday trap days right because I, I promise you when I take you to the chart you'll see it they throw everything at you just to fool you sometimes they uh, they may trap uh, the buyers um, here they may trap the seller sellers as well before they come out and so typically I don't even trade Sunday Sunday or Monday I wait for Tuesday and then that way I can take a look back and see what they've done and again if I can't tell what they've done then I just simply don't trade I go on to the next pair or I wait on to wait for the next week okay it's not uh, you don't you don't have to trade all right you don't have to trade no one's forcing you uh, to trade now let's take a look at the 
W formation. All right. So Sunday, Monday, accumulation, trap. All right. Again, they may trap at the they may trap the uh, the sellers up there. They may trap the buyers down here. All right. But nonetheless, all right. Um, this is the W formation. All right. They're going to set the peak formation for the week. All right. They're going to come down. Okay. One push. Two pushes. Three pushes. Then you'll see that. And, all right. So again, here we have. Sunday Monday all right again you this is what you have Sunday Monday you have the uh, accumulation and trap Sunday Monday then they have they're gonna make the peak formation for the week okay and then um, here all right here uh, on Tuesday is our uh, safety trade all right again this is the trade that goes away from the peak formation from the Sunday Monday trap. All right, this this is the this is the trade right here. It goes away from it. Okay. All right, and then it's gonna go up, and then on uh, Wednesday through Thursday, it's gonna be our midweek reversal, and then on Friday. We're going to get our accumulation, all right, and then it all starts over again, okay. All right, so that's the W. That's what the W looks like, all right. Now, let's keep going. We're almost done here. I'm going to show you, how, I'm going to show you what this looks like live, okay. Now, I want to talk to you about uh, the EMAs and counting levels all right uh, to help us to trade uh, to trade uh, this strategy uh, we're gonna use some tools we're gonna use um, exponential moving averages all right and they're gonna be used to uh, count the levels okay uh, the market moves in threes all right you know how they say that life comes at you uh, in threes okay the market uh, moves in threes the market makers know that uh, this is something that people live by all right that life comes at you at three so they they want to copy it and they they use it all right so now with the EMAs the five EMA that's going to be our red EMA the 13 EMA is going to be our yellow EMA. The uh, 50 EMA is going to be our white EMA. And the 200 uh, EMA is the aqua blue EMA. And the 800 uh, EMA is the um, uh, navy blue EMA. Now, how do, we, how do we use these to take a look at the levels? So with all the EMAs, level one, uh, we're going to see a flattening of the EMAs, all right? All the EMAs are going to be kind of like joined together, all right? And that's going to be level one, all right? And then level two is going to be the crossing of the white 50 EMA and the 200 aqua blue EMA, all right? And you're going to, again, you're going to be able to identify level two when that happens. All right, and level three is going to be the fanning of the EMAs, right? Then they're all going to just spread out, all right? They're all going to spread out, all right? And now this does happen on uh, the daily and the weekly cycle, uh, but we mainly look for the weekly cycle, all right? We mainly look for the weekly cycle, okay? We're going to not trade Sunday, Monday, right? Uh, not maybe possibly get jump in on the safety trade all right just depend upon you know who you are and how comfortable you feel but we mainly want to wait on that midweek reversal right because that's going to be that third level okay that's going to be that third level where we know without a shadow of a doubt uh we're going to get a mid a midweek reversal all right so that's that's what we're looking for all right and so that's what we use these emas for now the other 
Alright guys, and the next tool we're going to take a look at, it is the TDI or the Trader's Dynamic Indicator. All right. And again, uh, you'll see what this looks like uh, when we move over to uh, our charts. Um, but uh, let's go through this here really quickly. Now the blue Bollinger Bands of the TDI, they help us to determine the uh, market exhaustion. All right. The green price line, uh, it shows us how price is and has acted. All right. The red signal line, it uh, will show us the market bias. All right. And the yellow baseline shows, uh, shows us the market momentum. Okay. Uh, the 68 level of the TDI, uh, this shows us that the market is at a overbought uh, condition uh, the 50 level of the TDI it shows us that the market is at a neutral condition and um, the 32 level uh, of the TDI shows us that the market uh, is at a over oversold condition all right uh, now also when we look at the uh, TDI indicator okay when we look take a look at the TDI indicator I'm gonna give you uh, some signs uh, to look for uh, with the TDI indicator and it's also uh, gonna help you to determine uh, when you should get in and out of the trade alright so you'll hear me uh, from time to time talking about the uh, shark fin out of the water and that basically means that uh, when the green price line is outside of the blue Bollinger Bands and that could be either at the top or the bottom alright and then you may also hear me say blood in the water okay blood in the water and that's when the green price line has crossed the red signal line alright and uh, we also have the term yellow chicken trader all right the yellow chicken trader and that's simply when the green price line has crossed the yellow baseline and this is just pretty much the reason why I call it the yellow chicken trader but it really should be uh, the smart trader uh, but this is just typically uh, just a point to where you want to get in and you definitely know that uh, you're gonna basically be successful uh, in your trade now however you're gonna really miss out on over half of the trade uh, but we don't have to be greedy right um, just compound your uh, compound your trades compound your account uh, excuse me stack your trades compound your account and uh, you know your, your account will start to grow and you know you just want to be patient so uh, again I call it the yekin, the yellow chicken trader uh, right uh, because you know you just think about uh, you know when we call someone who is afraid we call them a chicken you know they have a yellow streak down their back but in all actuality um, for me I, this this is the, the, the smart trader uh, but again the more and more you become confident and the more and more uh, you become um, you know comfortable uh, with this trading strategy you'll be able to get in like way up here okay now the next term is what I call is uh, blue in the face death trader all right all right uh, typically uh, when there's no life in you when there's no breath in you you turn blue all right and so this is when the green price line has reached and recrossed the opposite blue Bollinger band okay so uh, let's uh, again when we move over to the charts all of this will make sense to you okay all of this will make sense to you but I just want you to keep these things in mind uh, when we're looking at the chart okay now let's talk about what pairs uh, you should trade uh, to be honest with you any and all the pairs uh, they go through these manipulation cycles okay every single pair every single thing that you can trade whether it's stock whether it's uh, foreign currency whether it's commodities whether um, 
whatever chickens what whatever whatever you can trade uh, they go through these manip manipulation cycles all right and so you just think about supply and demand that's that's really what these cycles are they are cycles of supply and demand all right so uh, the the market makers they uh, they create a demand for the supply and then they provide it okay then they provide it so that, that's really what it is they're um, they're manipulating the market albeit to uh, their benefit um, but it's still it's still the the old uh, supply and demand adjectives uh, that's that's taking place now there are a few uh, there are a few pairs uh, that are more volatile that have low spreads they have lower spreads than others and those pairs are the euro the euro USD uh, pair all right the GBP USD the USD Swiss the New Zealand uh, uh, versus the uh, American dollar all right the Australian dollar versus the US dollar the US dollar versus the Canadian dollar the uh, USD JPY alright the Aussie JPY uh, the Euro JPY alright the Great uh, British Pound JPY alright the GBP Swiss the Euro Aussie uh, and the Euro Canadian uh, pair uh, now I typically like to trade uh, the zero to ten pip spreads, right? Uh, just because they, they again, it's it's lower spreads. Um, I don't have to worry about a lot of drawdown, and you can trade these with you know very very small accounts and don't have to you know worry about um, um, your account being taken out as long as you uh, practice uh, proper account management, right? and that's basically not over leveraging your account uh, now once your account is strong enough uh, you can begin to um, start trading the higher spread pairs with um, high volatility and uh, those pairs just the some that come in mind are the New Zealand New Zealand dollar pairs and especially the uh, GBP uh, NZD all right, I think that's like a 15 pip spread, but man, that thing it 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 moves fast and it moves far, right? In either direction, it moves fast and it moves far. So, uh, you know, you'll jump in there and, uh, you know, uh, if I'm not mistaken, I think the the average uh, daily range of the pip movement for the um, uh, GBP NCD is like, I want to say uh, like 230 uh, pips a day or something like that. All right, and so you you know you're talking you know you put a dollar on it, and at the end of the day you know you can be anywhere you know you can make two hundred and thirty dollars you know off of a one dollar investment. So uh, I, I love the GBP NZD, um, and I typically will not trade this unless like you know it's just a a, a, a very optimal um, trading condition, right? And for my favor so uh, but this this is really good and uh, again once your account has grown strong enough I, I do recommend um, that you um, try try that all right let's uh, let's jump over to 